one be LGBT and religious at the same time. This mm. is very universal, right? Like mm. it's a very hot debate in all around the world, mm. in many different countries, mm. in many different ways. And same as in Turkey, but like the, the secular secularist blankets mm. kind of makes it so that like people people in the community assume, well, again, maybe it's similar to other countries, like, you know, oh, how can you accept a religion that's not accepting you? Mm. Which is very easy to say, but, but in reality, it doesn't really solve mm. everybody's problem, and especially, like, if you have, the, people in Lambda doesn't really have an attitude, I must say, but, like, if you were to have an attitude, you would just drive away people who happen to be gay and, uh, or LGBT and, and it's just away from the organization or away from the community which there, there's for the community there's this thing like feeling isolated from the community community kind of thing mm -hmm. and obviously you're even more isolated maybe from your religious community if you are involved mm -hmm. and, and Lambda well, has been and, and, and the movement generally has been of people who come from secular family backgrounds mm. so again myself <laughs> so it's and, and the, the volunteers are not very religious people and I'm sure like this is like it, it starts one way and it attracts people similar people so it goes like that unless you do something about it to tackle it we've had a very good discussion uh, some weeks back here uh, we had guests from um, from France and from uh, Australia. This uh, this scholar from Australia, she's uh, originally a uh, Palestinian who comes from Lebanon, and she's a good scholar. She's a very young woman who studies about uh, homosexuality in Islam. She has several books about it. It was very, very interesting to have her talk here. And then there was this uh, Algerian French man, gay man, uh, who has started this Muslim gay organization in France a while back, I think some five years or so. Mm. And uh, he's also a scholar and uh, he has a book about his own experience, about how he was like struggling with religion and being gay and then he, he got away from religion and then he reconciled with his religion mm. and he reconciled his identity with his religion and he started this organization, etc. etc. Uh, what are their names? Uh, yeah, uh, his name is Mohammed. Um, Mohammed Lotfi, but he has a, another first name, French first name, I can't remember. And her name is Samar uh, Hadidi, I would say. But female homosexuality in Islam, Samar, I think. So. Uh, anyway, so, so it, it was very popular, I didn't expect it to be, it was a rainy Monday evening, I didn't expect so many people here, but it was like packed, it was people were flooding outside, like there were 60 people, wow. and it was a very lively debate, because some people are, you know, like very, feel very strongly about like, you know, oh, I'm not going to accept that kind of religion that doesn't accept me, kind of thing, and then there were other people, which I was very happy about, like there's this one blogger who has been writing about his being Muslim and being gay experience on the internet. Mm -hmm. He lives in Eskishir. I was emailing with him. I never met him in person. He saw this and he decided to drive all the way from Eskishir for like four hours with two of his friends. Yeah. Apparently they have kind of a small community, like a close knit community, Muslim gay people that are getting together at homes and stuff. That was very interesting to have them here. So uh, yeah, that was a that was maybe a little bit start. I also asked Samar as to like how can we tackle this issue of like religious people possibly not fe feeling welcome to come here and she said maybe you can have, you can announce a meeting saying we want to talk about these things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and let us get to this stuff. The issue is not that they're not welcome, mm -hmm. but uh, like I said before, like it's not enough to, to be welcoming, like you know, as a person, and I'm, I can say this easily for all my colleagues, you know, we're not people who openly discriminate against disabled people. We are never going to say that, uh, we never even do this, you know, yeah. we won't do this, but that's not enough. Because like, you know, it's, it's more complex than that. You really need to actively think about what's stopping people from coming here. Yeah. For a single person in you know, a wheelchair, the stairs, you know, like, it doesn't matter how welcoming, how big smile you have, yeah. you know. And, and for blind people, 
I mean, or deaf people, you know, like sign language, etc., etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, it's not enough to, it, it's not enough not to be discrim openly discriminatory against, mm -hmm. but like there are discriminations that you do without intending to, without being mm -hmm. aware. Mm -hmm.